Hi everybody, Mark here from PondAlgeSolutions.com and in this video I want to talk a little bit about uh, pond aeration and aerial mapping services. Now, we tend to use this uh, free service for larger uh, ponds, complex ponds and lakes, uh, ponds that have a very odd shape or configuration and those that are usually oh, over two or three acres in size uh, or greater. Uh, most often in smaller ponds of let's say an acre up to two acres uh, a pretty straightforward uh, layout uh, of the of the aeration system will be easy to do it's not to say that we won't do it if you need it um, particularly um, some ponds may require uh, even smaller ponds of an acre two acre in size may require mapping and it's no problem to do it but uh, most often we'll find it useful for very large uh, sh and complex shaped ponds now a typical aeration system, as you probably know, uh, includes a few components. One, you have a uh, air compressor, which is normally mounted near the power source. Uh, that may come with a weatherproof cabinet, cooling fan, package, so uh, pressure gauge, so forth. Uh, you've also got weighted airline. Um, in some systems uh, on the market today, you will find poly tubing offered. However, we generally don't recommend that anymore. Uh, weighted airline is kink proof, extremely durable, um, and is self weighted so it sinks uh, naturally to the bottom of the pond. And for you as an installer, and many of these systems can be installed quite easily by the, the pond owner. Uh, for you, that's just a much easier thing to work with when the uh, airline doesn't have to be weighted with something else. And then we have the diffuser, which is the plate or um, tube that you see uh, sitting at the bottom of the pond where the air release point is. Uh, and so this is a typical aerator package with a single diffuser in it, but uh, the larger systems may have up to five or six diffuser uh, components that will be spread around the pond. This is a typical uh, aerial mapping that we would do. Um, this is showing the actual diffuser locations or air release points. Now ideally you want to provide good coverage throughout the body of water and this could be determined not only by the the uh, width and the length of the pond but also uh, depth will be a factor too. The other thing about aerial mapping that is handy and probably the most important thing is you can see on this diagram where the compressor is located. That is put near a power source. The purple line is actually lightweight burial tubing that we would use over land and then that connects to weighted tubing at the pond edge and the weighted tubing is represented by the yellow lines. Uh, where this becomes important is when you're purchasing or estimating how much of the weighted tubing you will need. Uh, there is some expense to this and so you want to make sure you don't uh, overdo it and you want to make sure that you have enough to get the job done so each one of these uh, diffuser positions is marked and then measured so we know exactly how much airline is going to be needed. Now this is another uh, example of a mapping um, service feature if you want to call it that. The diagram of the actual pond is hard to see but this gives a breakdown of uh, a number of factors including the depth of the pond and depth is always a factor. The uh, We'll take the surface area of the body of water and its configuration and then we'll also look at depth and we'll use all of those components to size an aerator package. Shallow water uh, will require more release points in order to cover it adequately. And so uh, this particular pond that you see has reasonable depth on the edges, something around nine feet on each side, but through the middle of the pond it's only five or six feet deep. And so there needs to be more uh, release points for air uh, in these shallow areas compared to just using a single release point in some of the deeper parts. And so uh, when we ask for uh, information regarding a pond, we're going to ask for the, the size, uh, length, width, and the average depth, and then maximum depth. And if, uh, if we can, we will try to look at it from uh, Google Earth or Google Maps and get an idea of how, uh, how the depth may vary throughout the pond where the power source is and then we'll factor all that in to do the layout for you. So 
it's important too, I think, to uh, do your own research on aeration for ponds. And so there's a couple resources we'd recommend that you check out. Our blog at pondalgesolutions.org has a number of articles, most re recently a very important one on how to introduce pond aeration to your pond during really hot weather. There's several steps that you'll want to take that are critical to protecting fish if you have those, and so it's good to know. We also have additional articles at pondtalk.com where we talk about the difference between an aerator and a fountain and why uh, one may be better uh, for a particular application compared to the other. And then for specific packages and to request the aerial mapping service for your pond, you can visit us at pondalgesolutions.com slash pondaeration dot html that's the specific page with our aerator packages on it and uh, by all means if you have any questions about your pond or pond aeration stop by pond algae solutions and get in touch we'll be happy to try to help